Welcome back to our second video. Back with the anatomage table at Huntington University. Today we're looking at digestive system, urinary system, and female reproductive system with another video on the male reproductive system later. And back with us again is Dr. Bruce Evans from Huntington University. Thank you. And so here we have the Asian female cadaver that's in here. I think we've used her before. And I'm going to now take us to the digestive system. And there's the entire digestive system right there. Woo! What does it look like? Not much. But if we look at it from this standpoint, we can see certainly we have some, I'm going to cut them out. We have this falciform ligament helping to hold the liver to the abdominal wall. And we have that greater omentum, which is a fatty membrane pad that covers the anterior side of the digestive system. So now we can see most of the organs here, like this is our liver. We can see that pretty well. So the liver, yeah, it's about as big as you want to get it. Yeah, probably. And then if we come over here, we see there is the stomach and this person had a gastric cancer. And I've seen this gastric cancer before. It's hard to find, but it is, it is able to be found. There's an esophagus. And then we come down here and all these sausages are, are the pieces of the small intestine. If we come over here, we see, now let's get rid of that, uh, get rid of the mesentery, the lesser omentum, which you can't even see at this point. And then we can see, well, there's further uh, part of the small intestine. Which in this is yeah. appendix. So, so we see there was the cecum starting into the ascending colon. That's large intestine. And then we come down here and we see there's the appendix. Which, so if you ever have appendicitis, this is the thing that they have to take out of your body. Yeah, the appendix, a lot, a lot of people will tell you that it has no function, but it certainly has function. And it has functions within the immune system and helps to uh, hold bacteria for us if we are ill. It'll hold them in there and then we get well again, it'll let them back out and repopulate the, the colon. So one thing we can see right there is a little gallbladder. We can see over here that stomach again. And then most of this you see is filled with the uh, small intestine. I'm gonna take out a few things so we look Get rid of the stomach, and we get rid of parts of the large intestine. And then we come down in here, and we can see the pancreas, right? So I undo that. There's the pancreas. There's where it was. And I can see that the pancreas is right there. If I come over here, there's the gallbladder, right buried within the liver. So if I remove the liver, there you can see where the liver was, and the gallbladder was right here. So I undo that. The liver back, gallbladder here. So pancreas over here, gallbladder here. Right? So, so undo all that. Let's do un undo all that stuff. Oh, we went back there. Don't do that. So now I'm going to isolate the small intestine. Let's see, get rid of the pancreas, get rid of the liver, get rid of the gallbladder, and so I'll leave the esophagus, the stomach, and then the small intestine. I'm going to get rid of the large intestine. Like that, right? Yep. So now you can see. Esophagus coming down here into the stomach, so the diaphragm would be right there and the heart would be over here. And so the stomach is here. It connects to the small intestine over here with the duodenum, which is the first part of the small intestine. And then that comes over here. We have the jejunum, which is the second part of the small intestine. We come down here, here's the ileum. So the small intestine, if I look at it this way, it's much longer than the large intestine, and you can see that it's smaller in diameter, which is where it gets its name. So esophagus, stomach, 
and the three parts of the small intestine. I'm now going to get rid of the small intestine and do the look at the large intestine. So let's get rid of that. Let's do the cecum, ascending colon, de transverse colon, descending sigmoid colon. There's your large intestine. And get rid of small intestine and all those structures there. So there's your large intestine. If I come down here, I see there's a descending colon. So this is headed over here to what's called the sigmoid colon. And then the rectum would be here and the anus would be down here. So this, if we turn it around like this, this would be the right side of the body. This would be where there's a little hole right there. I don't even see that. But that little hole right there would be where the small intestine joins the large intestine. Right there. So let's get rid of that. And so if we do that, we can then see this would be the first part of the large intestine there, cecum. We add in the appendix, and now you can see where that appendix was. We saw it before, and I see it again. So this is transverse colon up here. Descending colon down here, sigmoid colon down here. And if I add in the rectum, there's the rectum. If I add in the anus, then there's the, a, a little bit of an anal, anal canal. So the sigmoid colon connects to the rectum, which connects to the anal canal and out the body. So where's the uh, internal sphincter? The internal, well, those will be all here. I don't know if it is externals about right here. Internals. Yeah, let's get rid of the rectum. Let's get rid of all these things. Let me just look at that. Let me see. So there's, so there's the anus itself. And then if you start right there is pretty much external. Yeah, external sphincter is going to be there. Let's see if we can cut this and see if we can see that, because I'm not sure. Okay. Cut that like that, turn it up like this. Um, not really. Not really seeing it very well. But those would be, the external sphincter would be out here, which would be under um, your control, and the internal sphincter would be under control of reflexes. Anything else? I think that's probably about it for digestive system. Okay. Store everything. Go back to systems, and we now want urinary. Urinary, yes. And we want to do that. And this is female urinary, so there won't be much of a urethra on it, much less of, than a male. So when you think about the urinary system, you think about kidneys. What do kidneys do? Homeostasis of blood. That's what they do. They form urine. Yes. They get rid of toxins. Yes. They do all that. But they are doing homeostasis of blood on electrolytes, water, pH, uh, a number of things, right? So everything else here is plumbing, right? Once you, once you form the urine in the kidneys, then this ureter is going to carry that out. So I can see that ureter is attached right there at the hilum, which is the medial portion of the kidney. And if I, let's cut this thing. I cut this kidney, kidney down the middle, get rid of that part. And look at that kidney now. You can see a cortex around here. You can see the medulla here with renal pyramids, multiple pyramids and renal columns separate those pyramids. And I can come down here and I can see, it'll label it. Yeah, here's major and minor calyces. So the, these are the collectors of the urine after it is formed. It comes down through the collecting ducts in the renal columns, and then eventually is going to lead into the pelvis. So calyces collected, it's already urine, it's not gonna change, it's now just plumbing. Into the pelvis, into the ureter, all the way down here, left and right, and the ureter comes into the bladder. So you can see the ureter, ureter comes in here, the ureter comes in there, and then we also have the exit 
here through the urethra. So there are one, two, three holes that are connecting to this bladder and th that's called the trigone. So if we, I tried to cut this open earlier and see if you could see all those together. I wasn't very successful. I'll try it again and see what happens. If I can get it just right, maybe it'll show me that. Kind of, you can see one there, two there, and three there. So I guess you can see them. So each of the ureters coming in there and, the, and then the urethra there. And, and like Mr. Evans said, I think, I think he said this. Anyway, the urethra in females is much shorter. It leads to more urinary tract infections from in women than in men. Okay, but that's a pretty simple system, really important system with the kidneys. Everything else is, is pretty simple. That's why we spend like an hour talking about the kidneys and notes and then combined maybe 10, 15 minutes doing ureters and bladder. Yeah, the, the, the bladder, just just the bladder stretches with, as urine comes in and then there's a reflex with the detrusor muscle which says, hey, you gotta go pee. And then you go, right? That's probably about it for your urinary. Yeah, so now, I'm gonna actually gonna leave that up there and I'm going to then add the reproductive system and then you'll see how they kind of mesh together. And you can see then how the vagina and the urethra. Yeah. So now it looks kind of like a mess. <laughs> uh, but I, I think you don't want to see the ligaments, right? Can we get rid of the ligaments? Yeah, we can get rid of yeah. the ligaments. So you can see there are ligaments here that are kind of holding all these organs in place. You've got to hold them in place. But we're going to get rid of them. Ding. And there we go. So now you can see we have the reproductive tract and the urinary system here. You can see the, the ureters are coming into the bladder and then the urethra is leaving, but the systems are separate in women. Systems are separate in females. And now we have that structure, which is the right ovary. This structure, which is the right fallopian tube, right? So obviously we kind of flipped that around. Now we're looking anterior. That right fallopian tube, is then going, here's the bladder. So here we have the uterus, the fallopian tube. So, so the eggs are produced in the ovaries, released as a secondary oocyte. Fertilization will take place somewhere in this part of the fallopian tube called the ampulla. And then the embryo starts to come on down here, plants itself in here, uh, implantation also called nidation, which I think is a term you infused with them, maybe. Uh, so the uterus is where the baby grows. This is also called the womb. And the uterus is connected to the vagina through an area called the cervix. So we'll try cutting this open in a minute to, to see uh, if we can see that, actually see that cervix. Uh, but the vagina leads to the outside. And so if you come down here like this, you can now see, well, like this, there we go. So now you can see that there are labia minora surrounded by labia majora. And then if we go to the lateral aspect, you can see that anteriorly is also the clitoris. So you can see labia majora, minora, clitoris, and then connected to the vagina, connected to the womb, and all the way out to the ovaries. All right, let's take that womb, the uterus, and cut through it and see what we can see. Just take a slice right down through it like that and see what happens. Oh, okay, I can see your walls pretty well. Yeah, so here we can see, see that pretty nicely. Uterine wall, you have a parametrium connective tissue. You have a myometrium, which is the muscle, which is gonna help birth that baby, and then you've got the endometrium, which is the lining of it, which is going to be where the baby grows. It's also what is lost during the menstrual cycle. Yeah, if the endometrium no, sloughed off. The if there is no pregnancy, it is lost once yeah. every about 28 days. Right, and so this constricted area right here is what, they're just gonna label the whole thing as uterus, but the constricted area down here is going to be the cervix, and then if we add in 
Well, I don't know. Did we take out? Uh, let's see. No, the vagina's already there. I guess we just cut it so that yes. you can see it. So, so if you undid that cut, let's see what happens. You undo the cut, then you can see. Well, then, in, then if you cut it like this, if you cut it along this line here, you should be able to see. Yeah, kind of like that. Yeah, there you can see how it kind of projects so now, into it. Yeah, you can see the cervix is projecting into the lumen of the vagina. You can see these little recesses here. These are called fornices. Uh, individual one would be called fornix. So sperm are deposited in the vagina and they have to travel up through the cervix to get to that. And also see the, like the exit into the major menor labia. Yeah, you can see where it's leaving the body here. All right, we good? I'd say that's probably good for female reproductive system, yeah. Unless you okay. have some magic button on here that can show what happens during childbirth. <laughs> Which uh, I assume, no. probably not. But what we'll see in the next video is the male reproductive. We'd make it one video, but it takes, one, it takes about four or five minutes to, to, uh, to load a different spot. <laughs> so we're gonna, we're gonna stop this video. And I see, I see Addison, you're here with us. So you can, uh, well, Brett, you can tell you can tell her what to do, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go to the other cadaver.